Okay. Think better? So? Better, better? That way it's not pointing down constantly? Yeah. Don't be afraid to grab your mic and manhandle it, or woman handle it, as you prefer. Mm -hmm. It should be on. Was, did you see the blue oh, lighty thing? Well, we'll figure it out next time we decide to get up. It's too much work now. That's fine. Okay, let's take Bo a second. We made it. Hi, Bo. Man, there was a lot more struggle tonight than normal. I agree. There was a lot of new stuff, too. Well, that's the thing, is we all normally throw this much new stuff at each other. You. Yeah, he is, but he's adorable still. <laughs> we got Pearl in her Pearl chair. Oh, oh my gosh, that's a hardcore trigger bird. Ow! <laughs> Ow! Ow! Hey guys, this is Name Pending. This is Name Pending. I'm Mike. I'm Keeper. I'm and Ginger. We got Ginger. She's joining us. I'm again. not lost. Dude, do the thing. Do the thing. What's the thing? The, the, the girl the v, thing. The V face. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up cute. <laughs> so, <sighs> since I had her do the thing, do we want to talk about the thing real quick? No, we'll leave it in suspense. Oh, uh, we're going <laughs> to leave things in suspense. And we'll huh? touch on it in a second. Oh. But. First Depending on first. how long your book talk is. First things first is book talk. Book talk. Book talk. Okay. Book talk. Book talk. Book talk. Book talk. Lovely, <laughs> lovely book I'm talk. <laughs> what? Are you ready? I think this is book thing. Am, am I ready? Are you, I'm waiting for you to start talking about the books you may or may not have read. Okay. Well, I actually um, I don't know. I had a busy week. But I, I did start a new book series that I haven't read before. Sci-fi series. Um, it's called Grimm's War. The series is called Grimm's War. The first book is Against All Odds uh, by Jeffrey H. Haskell? Haskell. I'm going with Haskell. It's probably pronounced incorrectly, but I'm going to stick with it. Mm. Tell us if it's pronounced wrong. Please tell us if, it, if it's pronounced wrong. So we start off. And this is sci-fi, right? So, you know, space navies far into the future, blah, 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 blah. Normal. Um, we're following a, a young lieutenant. You know, he's sitting in the big chair on a, on a ship uh, during his watch shift. And uh, shit starts to go a little sideways. It's the middle of the night. Captain's asleep. On watch, shit goes awry. Um, Rings war, just starting out. So his, his sensors team sees some shit. Look at a little sketchy, and he goes with his gut, and he shifts the ship around so that they could get a different angle on their sensors contact. And when they do, they see that, oh, shit, there's some ships laying in ambush. And about the time that they see that they're laying in ambush, they start launching missiles. Missiles? Missiles. So they can go, <laughs> gotcha, bitch. Gotcha, motherfucker. <laughs> so... I think two of their ships and their little convoy of warships get taken out immediately. And he's sitting there like, okay, well, we covered a lot of the other missiles incoming. We are going to launch strikes at some of the, these remaining ships before they can do a hit and run and get away. Right? Return fire. Return fire. Return fire. Stop blowing holes in my ship, Ardvark. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. So he fires, uh, he, he orders the firing of their long range weapon. And about that time, Captain finally comes over and takes over, takes charge, right? And he's like, oh, thank God. As a junior officer, you this was a stressful right. moment, right? Yeah. But he did the job. He did it right. So they go and they go to recover the remains of the destroyed ship. Um, and it's a, I think it's called Califas, uh ship, which is like, it's a class of ship. Well, no, it it's like part of a regime. I think it's like a Muslim regime. Okay. Like space, you know. Space Muslims. Yeah, space Muslims. Um, space off space Muslims. So they go and they inspect the ship, and do you know what they find? Aliens? Space rugs, space prayer rugs, a bunch space. of dead kids. Oh. Classic maneuver. Did they bring the wrong backpack? <laughs> Holy cow! Bunch of dead kids on the boat. Yeah, on the ship. So, what naturally happens is the politicians get involved, 
And even though this guy, as a junior officer, did everything correctly, everything correct. He did everything wrong. He did everything wrong, and he gets thrown under the fucking bus. Because he blew up a ship with... They build a bus to throw him under. They probably built, like, a space bus. A space bus. However you throw him under it. Yeah. They they did it. Uh, So we fast forward to a couple years in the future, and, and we're seeing it from the perspective of, like, high admiralty. And obviously, they don't have a high, like, whoever's in charge doesn't have a high... Uh, opinion of this Mr. Lieutenant. Cowboy, you know, just shooting his guns off, causing incidents, right? Making the Navy look bad. Incidents? Incident. I'm standing by what everything I said. <laughs> That's fine. Um, Sorry, dogs are under the table doing stuff, making sure he's not touching the wires. You're good. So anyways. Admiralty Admirality doesn't like this new junior J.O., junior officer. So, you know, he's been on their shit list for a couple years now, and he's just been cruising through. Cowboy kill, kid killer. Yep. But they, the Admiralty comes up with a plan because they have a hot spot, and the politicians have been steadily, ever since the last war. So where we the, throw our troublemakers to the well, hot spot. Hold on. Ever since the last war where the civilian government ordered the Navy to go, ordered their military to go to war with another, you know, space empire. Um, And everything went sideways for them. And then they had proceeded to throw the Navy under the bus. Everybody's looking for a scapegoat. Everyone's looking for a scapegoat. So ever since then, the Navy's been trying to make, you know, things happen. And they've been having their funding cut and all sorts of stuff. So they see some sketchy shit going on in one sector, and they're like, we need someone who's aggressive, but disposable. So they chose Space Cowboy? Yep, they so they, Space they, Cowboy they Kid chose killer. Space Cowboy Kid, Under the Bus Kid, and they sent him and put him in charge of a destroyer that is in very bad shape. I mean, the author didn't take this out of nowhere. This has happened numerous oh. times. The, the ship has been, the ship CEO died of a heart attack. The and, cowboy kid killed him. <laughs> and they have not had any kind of discipline on ship this entire time. And they've just been cruising under their own power. Exo wasn't doing her job. I think someone's digging under the table. I think uh, you're correct. Oh, but, uh, they're fine. <laughs> they're fine. Um, I don't mind if they dig. Your dog taught my dog to dig. Now my dog's digging in your backyard digging. Congratulations. Stop <laughs> interrupting my book talk for your fucking dog. Um, so now he goes on. Mind you, he got denied the like command school training. that. Yeah, he's be- on the shit list. Because he's on the shit list. He got denied twice, and he's like, well, I'm probably going to get mustered out at some point, right? I might hit time and service. But they put him in charge of a destroyer. They make him the CEO of a destroyer. And he's like, so he's on. Realistically, he's on. A, he's, he's in the navy. He has a sub, not a sub, but a minor ship, in yeah. compared to what normal commanding officers would have. He's he's under rank for the position. He's under trained. Under trained for the position. His crew is in Shitsville. His ship is in disrepair. But he's probably someone you want to be under. And. He's on everyone's shit list, and everyone is expecting him to fail, and this is about as far as I got, because I started the book earlier today near the end of and the day. if this author goes through historically, he's going to be an amazing officer. Right. He'd still be on everyone's shit list. Oh, yeah. Somehow the politicians are going to fuck but it up, But he's going right? to do everything under the sun right. He's like, oh, somehow they came out of this battle. Somehow, <laughs> Navy history. It's like... 15 Japanese subs, and we had like four, and we lost none. They were damaged, brought back, and but you still did something wrong. You used the torpedoes wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Somehow <laughs> you did it wrong, according to the armchair admiralty. Which, by the way, this reminded me of something. Oh, dear. Let's go. Because we're shifting out of book talk now. We are shifting out of book talk. This <laughs> reminded me. We haven't got back to the V face, though. I haven't forgot about no, that. No, we haven't forgotten about that. This reminded me of a a, a little art, article on Reddit that I read, uh, oh, where where someone was talking about 
Reddit people probably know this, but a, a veteran was talking about how he had gotten out of the military and he was like the CEO of this company and someone going through the interview process name dropped him. And it's like, okay. Okay, so maybe. Maybe one of my friends or someone I knew yeah. or... No. If you're name dropping me, there, there should be value there. Piece of shit, Command Sergeant Major, who had been treating him like garbage. Now, here's the thing about this CSM. He was, and this, obviously, this was going after we got you so know, done with the So he was the boss of, the of him at a time, and now roles This guy switched. was one of those permanent trade doc NCOs. Explain What's Tradoc? There you go. Tradoc is Thank is you. is the the training branch of the military, right? It it's they go on they abide by different rules and and they have different laws and everything that they have to abide by to get soldiers and sailors and everyone else trained up. Okay. So they're um, the training division. But this this there is an issue with NCOs who during wartime were actively seeking to hide themselves away in places where they couldn't be deployed into the danger zone. Mm. These guys are pieces of shit. I want to be a desk jockey because I want to avoid war. Yeah. And so, of course, war stops and he's like, no, I'm down to go to a combat unit because there's no way I can get sent into combat. And this drunken command sergeant major apparently comes to a, a real unit and proceeds to show his ass all over the fucking place. And then gets out and tries to name drop himself for an interview for a guy that he doesn't even remember. Totally sounds like you're explaining the, the movie We Were Soldiers. When you say name drop, what do you mean? Name, name dropping is so, just... Simply, your boss... Is like new person knew your boss in high school, per se, and they're like, they know they own this company that you work for, and they're like, oh well, I know this person. We're really good friends. Ah, uh, okay, I understand. And then hoping that they get the job, or hoping they hoping like, that knowing that person gets them a little bit of when grace. In all reality, or it was like, well, they were a dick to me in high school. Yeah, yeah. So, I smell you now. Okay. I smell like sweat. I think we all kind of do smell like sweat. It's hot, and I'm not in 64 degree weather. I smell yep. like tobacco. That is also a true statement. Delicious, delicious tobacco. Your we tobacco know when does you've been to the smell house. good. Like Thank no you. joke, the house smells like pipe tobacco. Mm. Even over all the scentsy stuff my wife's doing, <laughs> pipe. If she was like, <laughs> Mike used this blanket because <laughs> my house is realistically igloo temperature for people who are acclimated to Texas yeah. weather. It's um. igloo temperature. Yeah, I'm sitting there playing games with him on Wednesday. Zelda, not Zelda. Zelda, not Zelda. Uh, I don't even remember the name, real name for Ember that Ember Knights. Yeah, Ember Knights. <laughs> um, and so it's not Zelda, but it's like Zelda. Like it, it has the same feel of a sword slasher and shield blocking type. It's a, it's a roguelite. Do you know what a yeah. roguelite is? No, but my, no. Your partner probably knows. Probably. Um, a roguelite. He's probably playing it now. Probably a roguelite. The premise of probably a roguelite playing Rust. is that you you essentially repeat the same levels or the same types of levels. They might have you know differing layouts or whatever, mm -hmm. but you you'll go so far through the lo roguelite and then you'll take some of the things that you earned from it, coin or whatever they're calling it, and you'll use that to invest into your character mm. and kind of build them up so that you can get further. And as you get more skilled, because you're repeating the same thing over and over. You're also gaining more things, more weapons, and stuff like this it's over the time. Build Shield, armor, and all the things. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm a huge fan of, of roguelites because the best part about them for me, especially with as busy as I am, and I know you feel this, is that um, I can drop into one and I can play it for a while and then I can just play it for. And you can pick it up whenever you want. Out. Yeah. yeah. My hard part is because I enjoy those games so much. This is the one game. Well, actually, there's like three games. Realistically, after we finish this one, we'll jump to another one. Yeah. But this is the one game. Mike was like, just don't play it without me. So this game lives there. I even bought more <laughs> controllers when my family comes down. We probably will play without you 
if you don't come over a lot of the time. But <laughs> I won't touch the game unless he's over. Like, to the point he left, I think we just beat the boss. Or I just beat the boss because you and my wife both died. Finished the boss, we got to the shop, and it was like, all these items are a little bit too expensive. If only we could share gold. Yeah. And then we did maybe one level, and then it was like, all right, well, food got here. Storm's supposed to be coming. And- I enjoy things like that. That's why I enjoy embroidery, because I can pick it up, do it, and then life happens, put yep. it down, it can Sewing, fit in my bag. leather and- work. A lot of your yeah. trades crafts are like that. Yeah. Like, Mike brought over his belt, and I was just like, oh, yeah, let me grab this one specific tool I bought to make life super easy and clip. Punch a hole? Punch a hole. Punch yep. a hole. Proper. Properly punch yeah. a hole. Yeah, not the way I do it, which is I uh, take a screw gun to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But let's get back to uh, the V-Face thing. The V-Face. Because my belief was I thought it started with Shirley Temple. Well, it, it really what it came down to is I was asking the question earlier because she did that whenever I was getting the cameras in focus. And I was like, where does this come from? Because I have no idea. Girls I've dated, girls I've been friends with, they've all done it. You know, it's all crazy. I was going to bring this up on podcast already. So you doing it was even more perfect because I was looking, where did it start? Yeah. And you found old Hollywood. I found. Old I Hollywood. found old Hollywood. Um, I also found it has um There's... a Japanese name, and yep. it's big in. But a, a lot of those are like these com- ones, or that I've seen, or yeah, it's yeah. It became more popular yeah. locally, modernly, by um. There was two people. One was an American. Starts with a G, last name H. Can't pronounce either of the names. Okay. And the other one was a Japanese. Um, content creator that really, really, really brought it back. But I, I know it started older movies. Thought it was. I think of like I think of like old Hollywood headshots, or like even in school, when you take a headshot, they make you do yeah. this number, and yeah. that it's it's supposed to be cute and innocent, and I don't. That's what the internet said. I always made sure I like, but made a face. All of my school second. photos are truly awful. Um, yeah, but... no, man, all the all the school photos are just terrible. <laughs> I think my worst one was my sophomore year. I don't know why I thought it would be a good idea to wear a scarf, but I had this same length hair I have now, so my hair is just like doing the awkward, horrible <laughs> flip thing off the <laughs> scarf, and so it's like scarf. I have a hair. scarf in my saddlebag on my bike, and I wear it almost every time I ride the motorcycle. Don't care what temperature is the same little. Oh yeah, the, the Muslim head wraps. Yeah, the, is it for the, sun the, protection or fashion? Actually, the reason for it on motorcycles is because you turn your head a lot. Mm-hmm. You're not rubbing up on this. And oh, it, like your it's helmet. It's supposed to help. It's supposed, ah. supposed to. I haven't done research. There's no factual data that I've done on this. But my opinion is, at least when I turn my neck, I'm just rubbing on cloth, so it's not. It's as not as abrasive. Yeah. yeah. It's not as abrasive. But it, I ended up getting my bike inspected, I don't know, a couple of days ago, Wednesday, yeah. I'd say. Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday. And I was like, oh, I, I was productive. And you're like, I'm so proud of you. You're not a useless piece of shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I went back to work on Thursday and my, one of my bosses was like, do you, do you ride a white bike? And I was like, did I cut you off? I'm so sorry. He was like, no, I actually passed you. I was like, oh, that probably wasn't me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's like, no, it's it's this, and you have like a Venom looking helmet. Oh, like, so what I'm hearing here is all the stories Keeper told me about him going fast are a lie I was now. Like, because he probably got passed by a 92 Honda Civic. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a diesel. It's a Cummins. <laughs> and I was like, where was it? He was like, oh, right here, close to where we work. I was like, oh. I was getting my bike inspected. That's why you passed me. Because, <laughs> oh, Because you were pulled over on the side of the road? Or you No, were... I had to pull into... Oh, into a business. I had to pull into a business yeah. to get it done. But, shoot, I was like, my bike's legal now. Watch me just fly. I'll, I'll pay the driving like a man tax. I mean, you have my license plate. You'll just meet me at home. I mean, I'm... I'm not going to slow down that much. Is driving like a man tax a ticket fee? Yes. Okay. <laughs> ticket, speeding ticket. Okay. Just 
clarifying. Yeah, luckily with the must or not with the Mustang, uh, but with the with the truck, I uh I don't worry about speeding that much. I do because I looked down on the bike and I was like, "Ooh, I'm doing 97 and a 65." Now on the Mustang, that's definitely an issue. Just wait, it gets oh, better. God, it will. Do you, get... do you wanna do you <laughs> right, wanna do right the now? Outline? Do you right want to do the breakdown? Eight thousand dollars is what we're gonna throw into it currently. <laughs> current prices. Yep. Um, fully decide where we're throwing a cheap supercharger on there. Yeah, because uh, it's what Ash Daddy would have wanted. And that's what's important. With the turbo. Because we need to be pushing about eight hundred horsepower on that car. So we're gonna reinforce the frame. Yeah. Front strut support, back support. Love stage two suspension, which just means we're supporting enough of the frame. So that way the frame doesn't twist, and then you have to rebuild no, I mean, the whole car. I mean, properly break this down, because you, you... I'm doing that. Well, no, no. How does the frame twist? Because you were breaking this down for me, and it was oh, very fascinating. Explain to me like I'm five. Okay. Yeah, ex- break so this down Barney style, the bro. The more horsepower <laughs> you push through the engine, the engine is mounted, supported by the frame. So, realistically, if you hold hold your fist like this and turn your fist... Like you'll you'll feel your your fingers twist. That's the best way to describe. Like seriously, it'll. What what happens when you're putting that much power into your frame? Like, and you just twist your hand. You're like, oh wow, my fingers are moving. Just just each knuckle, and you turn it. That's your engine in your car. And so, how's the strut stop the frame from twisting? So because instead of just having the bottom here supporting it, now we're at the top. Supporting, supporting what? The frame. The bottom strut, your axles, all this is supporting the bottom, so you have this. Yeah. Well, now, realistically, when the engine starts turning, these are moving now. That's why you have trucks going down the side of the road that are like, we're driving straight. It was like, you may be driving straight, but your back tires looks like it's about six inches to the left or right, (laughs) and I can see your mirror here, and your back end's here, and something doesn't sit right, because... You, you you either try to tow something too heavy or you put too much weight in and you floored it because you don't really care about your vehicle. Or you don't know how to tow or you don't know how to haul. Like or... many different variables. So, I mean, we'll, we'll essentially have a box like this so that way the whole box will move. Because... And it'll be the front and back. So, it will be, doesn't matter where it goes, it's all going to move together and all be squared. Yeah. Same way with woodwork. You want things squared. Yep. It's the same thing with engines, motors. You Wait, want them squared. Which is a lot of... This is fascinating stuff to me because I, I am not the wrench guy. I am... Uh, don't get me wrong. I ain't afraid to get my hands dirty. I know how to do some basic shit, but... Well, shoot, this guy. last time, it just seemed like... Oh, just get this... Get this fixed. This one little piece, and you're like, I feel like I was doing this the whole time just with the cold air intake. Because <coughs> it was like, we just need... This one hose, which they gave us, yeah, which is OEM, which it is OEM to the engine, just mm-hmm. not OEM to the other piece, and you literally have to like force it. I was like, "We'll put lube on it's, it." It's it's a it's a rubber hose, and I spent what thirty minutes? About thirty minutes. I was almost done working with... on putting a piece of plastic into this rubber hose because the piece of plastic was far too big for this hose. <laughs> not just rubber hose, reinforced rubber hose. So there's metal, metal in, in it, it that he has to fully get it. Because right now, I think you're pushing about 360, 70, or 420 yeah. horsepower right now. Just with the cold air, getting better airflow into it, which I'm not going to break down exact numbers because I don't have the specs in front of me. To... Yeah, I mean, you, you looked them up before. I did look them up before. I mean, the GT stock 2009. This 2007. Is... Oh, that was 2009. It's, it's an 07. Okay. We go through this every time we talk about the Mustang. Realistically, it's close to the same. Well, it's I think the it's same 5 year. to 9. Yeah. It's in the same cycle. Mm. You're talking about 1Z, 2Z. Same specs. Slight differences. We're talking about millimeters here. So, essentially, that's the purpose of... So, so we, we went through the struts. Uh, you were going to replace the rotors with... So, I want pretty much anyone who's Mopar knows what uh, Brembo brakes are. So I want something similar, but this is not Mopar. This is Ford. 
Mm-hmm. So we're going to touch a lot of Roush's big disc brakes. I want I want better rotors. I want better brakes on there. So that way, when when we're really flooring it, testing out the engine, pushing it, we're because Ash Daddy would love to hit it and yep. floor it. Absolutely. At least we have safety there. Proper mm-hmm. safety, not, oh, I'm going to deal with just the 300 horsepower brakes. No, no if you're putting 800 horsepower you're, in you're it, you need... 800 horsepower at the end of this build onto it. We need proper stopping power. 100%. So we'll do that. So the supports, the suspension stage two, we already have the cold air intake in there. Yeah. We're going to throw the supercharger on there first, see where we're at, see if we need to upgrade anything with a, a spec tool, attach the computer to it, tune it, spec it out. And then if we need to, we will throw a turbo on it eventually. But throw a what on it? A turbo. Oh, oh yeah. And then maybe throw another air intake on there. <laughs> so that way we can really push it. And we looked, I looked at some body kits and it was like, I was telling Ginger off podcast, the front looks great. And I even told you this, if it was the front, cool. But then the side just looks like banana haircut. Yeah. It, and it, that, it kinda, that lost it. Yeah. Um, and realistically, if we're talking about Ash Daddy, he would have been down for more power. He would have been down for the engine upgrades, but he would have wanted front that. And the front and rear look, look, the front and rear look. Would have been fine. Fine. Not the bananas. The the sides though were just ugly as sin. Because we're already gonna throw half an inch to an inch on the back tire, so we have mm. more rubber, more horsepower to the wheel on the back, so we can put it on the put it on the road. Put it on the road. But yeah, I mean road. that's that's the game plan. I think it sounds like a great game plan, and I really love that you're doing this in honor of Ash Daddy. Yeah, I mean. I, I, I'm sure I've said it on podcasts before. I know I've told Keeper. I'm pretty sure I've told you, but like when we were, this was probably a year before he passed, but he was asking me if I'd want the Mustang after he passed. And I said, yes. Um, and I asked him, what's the one thing that you would want? And he said, I would want to put a turbo. Mm -hmm. And so I got the Mustang. And the first thing I said to Keeper was this. And so he goes, but we can do better. Yes. <laughs> but that's intermission, guys. Yeah, it's intermission. Supercharger every turbo. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. I've got some jumping spiders inside my house, and I was like, you continue God's work, bro. I let a spider live inside my house for months. I intentionally avoided it. So last time we recorded out here, um, we moved the podcasting table off of my back porch, and when we did, oh, Daddy there, Long Legs! There were a herd of Daddy Long Legs that came like, crawling out. <laughs> no, it they a, were. It everywhere. was a coalition. They were getting ready to overrun Mike's property. It, it, I was <laughs> just like, and we just kept carrying things because they're Daddy Long Legs, right? Yeah, they they they're, don't do anything. They're like, you know man's third best friend have you ever noticed daddy long legs anywhere else i mean they're all over the place they're in my garage they're inside the we're house still, when we were, but we like were doing big... shooting the k&m photo or the video we were back here and i was cutting down trees and the big grandfather tree that's dead yeah i cut open one daddy long fucking legs. plumes plumes of them i was like <laughs> they're such funny spiders they they were falling out of the tree like water that's hilarious Ooh, what's that story about the daddy long legs and the walk? Where? And you were telling me the story about the daddy long legs and the walk. Oh, back here? Yeah. No, this is at no. my house. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, oh. at your house. <laughs> so, there was, on our back porch when we first moved in, then the first year, there was a wasp nest. So, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to do the responsible thing and I'm going to knock it down. So, I knock it down the first time. It's done. Cool. Problem solved. They build back on the same spot. Mm-hmm. Call my pest control buddy. He lived up the road. He owns his company out in Bernie. He was like, oh, well, you're actually supposed to leave them up because once we kill them, they think others own it. They're very territorial. So if, that's why I have a bunch of them on the side of my house. Yeah. They just live there. There's nothing there. They're dead. They're dead. But others think they live there. So I had a net, a 
old bird nest, which turned into a daddy long leg nest. <laughs> and then I had a new wasp nest after I struck it down. And I was like, I want to see how this plays out. And eventually the daddy long legs, all the babies would just come over and start attacking the wasp. Like we're talking about maybe eight foot separation. This is very that's what you'd say the yeah. from the house to the pillar. Eight foot separation. And the wasp would never come over here towards the daddy <laughs> long legs. But the daddy long legs, all the new babies, like, oh, it's feeding time. And they would just go and just attack the wasps full speed ahead. To the point you just I'd have wasp dead bodies, just carcasses very here. Very interesting. Aren't daddy long legs supposed to be poisonous? They are supposed to be the most poisonous spider in the world but they can't reach you or but they the can't thing? puncture our skin yeah oh, they can't they they can puncture exoskeletons of insects which is quite interesting to me because i don't know my brain i'm like oh an exoskeleton they can't puncture all exoskeletons when you talk about things like the dung beetle or most beetles they can't puncture it if it is a harder exoskeleton a harder shell once they start branching more into the shell then it's not which realistically they could it, it has to do with layers for us because how mm-hmm. how thick is layers of skin you seven have? layers yeah. of skin yeah you but know. if if you had i don't know a skin disease with lighter i actually want to look that up eventually yeah i mean would, it, would like, a daddy long leg puncture thin skin in an elderly skin. or someone who has, yeah. has a skin had some disease underlying or blood disease or I, I'm going to pause really quick. Look at this gorgeous little spider up here. See it glowing? Probably just the angle oh, you're at. Right yeah. It's so cute. I wonder how big it'll get. Okay, sorry. Continue. I did I did walk out onto my, my porch last night, and I just, I was peeing off my porch. That's what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, And I look up, and they, like right where, in, almost in front of my face, to the left, a spider had built. Oh, the banana spider? No, not the banana spider. There was another spider had built a uh, a web across the back of my porch. It's crazy how space. fast they work. And I was like, well, props to you, bro. And then I looked to the left, and there was another one who had built a space. But and it's web. not like you don't act like you use your porch all the time. All the time. So Yeah, I'm always on my porch. Like, yeah. There's a, a, a spider, a little guy. I'm, he's probably that size. I wonder how big he's going to get. But he's between my porch and my neighbor's house but i mean yeah there was a big ass banana spider who mm-hmm. had located himself on that front like uh pier um triangle here what is that what you're gonna say i was gonna say pyramid oh pyramid. oh in the front of your house yeah okay okay um and i i snapped a photo of him but he was just chilling there and i was like props to you bro because apparently ba- banana spiders although they look terrifying they're they're the the bite hurts, the bite, but it doesn't kill you. Yeah, it won't kill you. Yeah. This ain't Australia, right? But Black Widows won't kill you either. Yeah. It's just, you're going to hurt. You just got to wish for death. Yeah. Do you all ever just watch the like... guy who lets insects bite him? Yeah, we report? follow him on YouTube. Oh, yeah. he's, a, he's fantastic. We, it's quite interesting. It's very uh, educational, too. It is, and like I'm like, thank you for doing this for science. Thank you for this for science. By the way, <laughs> also my enjoyment. <laughs> all these years later, I'm still sad about Steve Irwin's death. I am too. I just watched yes. a video of him earlier today, and he was just like a bright. He was a bright light in our dark star. world. Yeah, yeah, he was he fantastic. Was so positive. His kids, and though, funny. His kids are amazing. Yeah, his kids They're are just like awesome. him. Like. His was I watched one with his son, and he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna go touch this croc. I'm gonna grab it by its tail." And it, this is in the middle of a zoo or a park or some attraction site. Yeah, he's doing it to feed it to show certain things, and he just sits on it. It was like your dad would be so proud of you, I bro. I know. I know. And I think he was like 14 at the time this was shot. Or yeah. is like the only time I'm jumping on the back of a croc is if it's dead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop it in the back of the head, call it good, turn it into boots, and that is because I'm getting boots, I'm getting gator jerky, oh, or some gator fried gator, yep, is fried life, gator, bro. I've never eaten out. Oh, it's so good. Just wait till we get our deep freezers, 18 wide at least, 24 wide is the goal <laughs> of just gator. 
Is that <laughs> is that your goal to have a deep freezer? Full That's of one gator? of the many goals. It's oh, okay. one of the many goals. Okay. Okay. Uh, Are you course, each gonna have your own deep freezer full of? Oh, gator? naturally. Okay. Obviously. Sorry, I mean, sorry, we'll sorry. share. Yeah. But. We'll... No, you you stay away from my deep freezer full of gator, boy. That's fine. <laughs> I'll share. <laughs> Mike just went from California to Texas to Louisiana. Real fast. Louisiana. Real, real fast. <laughs> I'm a hodgepodge of folks here. That's true. Howdy. <laughs> Say here right now, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we're touching that East Texas real quick. Mm. Talking about woods in East Texas, Japan has this. How is that? Oh. <laughs> well, no, so there's a very. Well, let me connect Japan. it. Japan! Talking about woods in East Texas. So Have there's you heard apparently a suicide woods yes. in oh, Japan. Oh, yeah. Yes. And that touched into, because we were talking about. Be, but, well, let's talk about the suicide woods, because they have an entire forest, which is known it's... as the suicide forest, mm-hmm. where people go to fucking die. Yeah. Holy shit, bro. And supposedly it's monitored to stop it, but somehow they still have thousands of deaths. Every year, and they they do shit like they take yarn and they attach it to something, and they wander off into the woods to go die. And the yarns, in case they decide to change their mind and come back. Oh, I thought it was so someone could find the body. No, no, because uh, they already have park rangers that are equivalent of park rangers that have to go through. And that sounds like a rough job. Yeah, no. My dad was a park ranger in Maine, and he said the amount of people that killed themselves up there. This was. 40 years ago now, 50 years, 30, 50 years ago, somewhere. Pretty sure it's not gotten better. And he's Uh. still in talks with some of them, and it has not got better. And this is just, the rangers go out there, make sure people are okay, just peruse, make sure nobody's poaching, and fire watch. Realistically, that's it. But every once in a while, and it's happening more and more, people just, the forever yeet. Yep. What'd you say? The forever yeet. Forever yeet. yeet. Okay. I'm just making sure I heard it correctly. 12 gauge surgery. Kickstarting a landmine. Any other? Bathtub toaster. <laughs> Keep them coming. I know you've got more. <laughs> what, what is it? Um, Laugh, love, bathtub toaster? Live, yeah, laugh, something love. Like that. Yeah. Live. I guess not live. live. Yeah. No. Just... Live, laugh, don't last. <laughs> Bye bye time. Um, Forever sleep. Forever sleep. Heard that one. I've never heard. Long the walk off a short pier. 80 mile an hour finish line. Long dart. Keep them coming. I, kn- <laughs> I know there are more. <laughs> the terminal finish. Mm-hmm. The dark eyelids. <laughs> Say it one more time. The dark eyelids. Dark this eyelids. cold skin touch. Okay. Anymore? I think I'm good for now. Yeah, I th- I, th- I think I've that concludes... I know I've I've got more, but I can't remember. It's okay. They'll pop in your head as soon as we finish recording, um, and then you're just gonna word vomit. I'm sure. I mean, but it is interesting that every culture has its own suicide thing. Mm-hmm. But I I don't want to just touch on that. That was the segue into it. Supposedly, allegedly, and there are companies out there, so it's not as alleged. Japanese culture has these companies that Stop help playing you. Stop with me. Help I was trying you not to kick the dog. I was Sam, trying not to kick Sam, the dog and Sam, I kicked Mike. Do you see this? She's playing footsies with I me. I kicked you. Live on TV. Live on Live TV. Live on TV. <laughs> That's it. Mike's cut Send off. Send help. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, that moon looks good. The moon it does really look good. Does. I saw it when it was coming behind the trees. Yeah, it's hot. I wish y'all could see I, this I right that now. Moon. Okay. That's not saying much. No, but I want to... It's very interesting. <laughs> Every time you guys are both on, for some reason, I'm never allowed to continue on to a next segment. Sorry. Every time. <laughs> and you know, we got a track record of this. Check our other check our other episodes out. You'll see this. <laughs> the lost other ginger, ginger episode. episode. I'm found. She's found. We found I her. I am. She's, yeah. she's not lost anymore. She's here. But there's companies that help people disappear. Like, how often have yeah, you been no, like... like Japan, like, because we've talked about it, it's like, sometimes you're just like... I'm done, just, can I disappear? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to deal with the bullshit. But the difference being is that we live in America, there's a lot of space to disappear into, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I could, I could go fucking up into the Tennessee mountains and and just ghost. I could go up to Alaska. 
I could go into the middle of nowhere, Texas. Go to Montana. You could like, go to and you could literally there are go anywhere. So many places for us to disappear to, but we're talking about disappearing in an island nation. Yeah, gone, like completely gone. Completely gone. This like, is very it, interesting. An, I haven't heard anything about this, so there's, I am. I did do a little bit of research. At there's at least thirty confirmed companies. Thirty companies. At least thirty wow. confirmed that I could confirm. I thought the number I saw for disappearances was eighty thousand people a year. I was just talking from about Japan the companies alone. Yeah, yeah, in Japan, eighty thousand people a year disappear. Wow. Yeah, it's... and he's got thirty. Com- there's an industry built around helping people and... disappear. And these are people who willingly want to disappear. Well, yeah. think about aren't... it. So we delete, we have all these different companies that help us delete our social footprint. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about removing ourselves from the social economic structure. Mm-hmm. Well, we're talking about removing you completely from everyone's understanding of life. Crazy. Like, this is witness protection program. On steroids. That's on steroids. what I was about to say. <laughs> like, yourself. Just yourself is like, and you know what? I don't want to deal with keeper me. I want to go become some other keeper me. And I mean, apparently a lot of it has to do with the the stressors and the expectations from family and the not wanting to be office drone. Yeah. Right? Because that's a big thing is being office drones. People don't want to be office drones well, in Japan. In a lot of Asian countries, it's... If you show up late to a meeting because you're talking to someone, that is perfectly acceptable. We have nap sections. We have nap booths. Like, they have sleep booths there. It's like, you pull a 20-hour day, that's normal. You fall asleep on the... Sleeping in public areas is actually means, to them, it's their own understanding of you're providing so well for your family that you're working so hard. You're sleeping, will protect you. And apparently, they're trying to do a correction on this in culturally, but there's an expectation that if your boss goes out to drink, everyone just goes out with them, and you're expected to go out with them because culturally, it's an expectation that you go out with your boss to drink, even though realistically, you just want to get home to your family and spend yeah. time with them. Because you're but probably yeah. taking care of your elders of your family. Yep. Like, you're doing- They're multicultural household. Yep. And so, you know, wives are so used to, you know, these stay-at-home wives are so used to their home, their husbands just coming home drunk all the time. Their cu- husbands are coming home drunk all the time because the boss expects them to go out drinking with them. Because they, culture's been this way for so long. Yeah. Not multicultural, multi-generational. Sorry. Yes, multi-generational, yeah. that's you. what it was. Yeah. It, it, I like the concept of a multi-generational household, but I couldn't do that. I couldn't have my parents live with me. If I had a guest house, I would have no problem with them living in the guest house. But in your house. I couldn't do the house. But you, you also got to look at how they have their setup. Most, not the small homes that they live in, but like the generational houses. There's two or three houses on some of the property or two, three floors where you, each floor has a kitchen. Yeah. So there's, there's a big difference of understanding but, here to there. But the other side of it is that the elders in the family have the final say on everything, even if it's your house. Matriarchal, patriarchal, yep. You know, so if your parents move in with you and they disagree with the way that you're you raising raise your, your kid, kids, yep. they get the changing. final say. You're changing how you're that raising your That would be very kids. difficult. You know, I've had friends who have struggled with that with their parents. I have successfully lived with my parents as an adult. Um. I'm the only one in my family who hasn't. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, not all families have open communication. I'm, and I'm talking like, obviously, we're American and we have American values, uh, traditions, yeah, tradition, and... values, I culture, and that's very different than every other culture in the world. But I mean. It's it's a challenging thing to do, but... but yeah, this goes back to cats meow in different languages. Last time yeah. you're on, it was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like it's the same thing to me. It logically, it's the same thing. I love my parents to death. Me and my dad would fucking kill each other if we were in the same house, hands down, right? Because we'd both be trying to run things. 
Yeah. I mean, if it's my house, I find will say, guest house, sure. Mother-in-law suite, that everything behind that door, and I've had roommates, everything behind that door, as long as it's tidy, it's not wreaking havoc on the rest of the house, it's good. Yeah, I don't I'm care fine. if you got laundry all over the place. Now, if it starts smelling beyond your threshold of your room, we have an issue. Well, yeah, because then it's common area, common space. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that. So, I mean, if we kept and- it there... But like you said, it's going into moms and dads, grandpas, grandparents, grandmothers, or Mike, you're raising your kid wrong. Or yeah. deeper, you're raising Ruth wrong. It was like, you know hold, what? These hands the are fresh and ready. Yeah. Like, you better catch these hands. And, I mean, you know, I've, I had roommates when I was in the Army. Um, and the thing about that, though, is that, like, I ran hurt on them. I I dictated cleaning schedules and stuff like that because I was bound to determine I wasn't raised in a filthy house. I right? just started banning them from using certain of my tools because no. they never cleaned them. Well, and I, they didn't use my stuff, but every Sunday, without fail, we cleaned. Like, I was like, what do you want to do? Do you want to do the bathroom? Do you want to do the this area in the common? Do you want to do the this area in the common area? What do you want to do? Pick it. I don't care. I'll do the other side. But you're going to clean. Two-story house, we did the same thing. It was like every week, we're all cleaning the common areas. Your two rooms are in charge of the bathroom. You guys are the only ones that use the bathroom. Yep. And the upstairs living room. I supplied all the furniture. You put your TV, your gaming con. All that is yours. Fix it. Make it not dirty because my bedroom's here. And then I walk downstairs. Yeah. Like. I mean, that's the house I grew up in. Is. This is your job. This is your job. This yep. is your job. Go. Yeah. Divide and conquer. I mean, same thing with, shoot, I was off Wednesday, and I'm fucking going through laundry. It was like, just need help with laundry. And I was venting to you on Tuesday. I was like, I just want to catch up on everything. I just no, want this sure. done. And laundry is always, like, the biggest thing. So we have two laundry baskets that I plan on folding tomorrow after we pick up wood. Because mm. I want to build a nice little kitchen nook table. Which will be on our K and M channel and a table. I know what I'm gonna do first. Ooh, the island. I don't want an island. No, me. Oh, me. here. <laughs> Ooh, ooh. Brain blast. It's not all about you, bro. No, but we were talking about my piece, and you're just like, I know what I'm gonna do first. And I was like, <laughs> but what? We could totally do that. Underneath both. T- ooh, okay. We're dreaming. Yep. Do you we're, know we're if your tile up. goes under your cabinet? It does. No, but I know how to do tile. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Tile is actually really simple. It's oh. it's a giant puzzle, and you just. No, I just didn't know. I meant, are got... you gonna have to redo it, or is it already completed? If you've got a fucked up brain like he does, very easy. Oh, okay. It's logical. It, he does. He logical. does Legos for enjoyment, and he listens to audiobooks whenever I can convince him to listen to audiobooks. <laughs> I've been. I, I think lots of people do Legos for. Enjoyment. I uh I pre- only Star Wars Legos. I I'm pressure him into uh, unless it's the Taj Mahal because I love the purpose of the Taj Mahal. I I keep trying to pressure him into doing more of my books. More of your books. I'm getting there. Tesla just threw on. Well, I drove. Okay, so I bought a murdered <laughs> out truck, completely blacked out. It's gorgeous. I, I will love attest. It. it is a beautiful it, truck. Minus the freaking lug nuts. How do you murder? How do you murder? <laughs> I could tell how, you how to murder. No. Blacked out rims. How do you buy? Silver not buy. Nuts. How do you? I bought a truck. I already bought the lug nuts. They'll be here tomorrow. You said it already, bro. No, it's just you can't change everything black. You piecemeal and it. And not change the lug nuts. They did it. They were wrong. I'm changing it tomorrow. Well, don't be a bitch. Be a bro. After we pick up the wood. After we pick up the wood. And then cuddle. As long okay. as you have your itinerary <laughs> and your agenda down, you're good to go. We're talking about, we, we've totally joked about, and I made a joke, I think, this week. I was like, bro, if I was gay, I would totally make sure your house is clean and everything's... Yeah, we did make that joke this week. Okay, but it, explain the joke. If you were gay, you would make sure his house was clean? Yeah, because and you would be dating. married. Oh. Yeah. But we're not gay because penises are gross. Penises are gross. They're Penises drunk are friends gross. falling out of a car. Thank God for women. You know what? 
God totally did like this. Octavius is a little funny looking. He was like, look, God totally was like, oh, well, I'm not finished with the woman. You know, we need, we need soda on the earth. <laughs> that works. That's, and he was like, all right, now I have time to finish crafting the, the this masterpiece. And you know woman. what? Just and to make just it even like... better, let's hide her perfect. And right there. We'll, we'll call this the G-spot after myself. And we'll just, <laughs> we'll hide it so no man can ever find it. Ever. Ever. By the way, I've heard of this thing called the clitoris. Have you heard of it? What's a clit? Yeah, I, I, I think I read it in a <laughs> dictionary somewhere. Send help. <laughs> Send help. Send help. <laughs> SOS. <laughs> She's over here blinking. <laughs> I think we had this conversation earlier when I explained my shirt and you told me female. Yeah. I also know what a peer- period is. He does. Because I'm, Yeah, I'm... it's it's when they get really, really mad during the month and don't want to deal with anyone. That's it. Because I'm in I'm in my <laughs> fucking thirties and and I'm not fucking shamed to just know some fucking shit. I will say I was very proud of Mike when he first moved into his house. He asked me about period products. Yeah. And we, we've covered this, bathroom we, etiquette. We, this is something every bachelor, every homeowner should have, in, especially in your guest bathroom. 100%. Like, Agreed. it's not just all about you, as Mike said earlier, when we were talking about woodworking. and Yeah. But it seriously depends on everyone that comes to your house. If you've got, if you've got friends who are female, or, the or they gender. have girlfriends or wives, and they come over for visits, just in case, bros. If you are a person who menstruates, you should have access to it's it's not big and it's, and if your emergency stash runs low because you either forgot or something slipped because your mind because life you're busy and life happens. Because life. It's nice to have the place you're going to care about your well being. Yeah. Be a safe space. It it realistically bros. Don't be afraid to walk down the tampon aisle. What the fuck, bro? You have no problem buying it freaking condoms, confusing. but you're going to be afraid to buy... They're literally in the same aisle. Walk a little further. They're on either side, I promise. Shoot, half the time when I buy those, I'm like... If my wife doesn't send me a picture, I'm just like... No, th- well, there well, are that's... a lot of options. And then, that's... and then I'll pick it up. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I I'm will say. I'm up here reading the description. It was like, it smells bountiful. And you're... And it was like... This does not help me with my. <laughs> and then there's, bless her soul. Every single time, there's always an older female, older <laughs> than me, and she's like, "Honey, do you, do you need, you need help? help?" And I was like, "Yes, please, Actually, absolutely." Yes, I do. I had a okay. I'm at H E B. Me and Sam were walking down the aisle. I'm like, "Oh, this is what I need." I ran out. She's like, "Okay, get whatever you need." And then here comes. Uh, another lady who's probably close to my age, give or take a few years, and then we start I'm having a motorcycle. A full conversation about what period products we like, and she recommends period underwear. And then she pulled her phone out, starts showing me links to stuff, and I loved my partner because he stood at the cart and just was like, "Just let me know when it's done. Just let me know when you're done. I'll be right here." And he just stood and listened and was like, "Okay." I'd be asking questions. My logical brain. <laughs> I think I asked all the questions that For probably the could have been asked, <laughs> and we were talking loud enough that he was just taking the conversation in. Huh. I mean, that's good. I mean, oh, absolutely. Me and my wife had a conversation earlier when we were at the dealership. She's like, I just don't understand. And then she's reading Ecclesiastes. She was like, Solomon must have just, like, been so smart that he because there's things he asked in ecclesiastes that he just was annoyed he was like what's the meaning what's the value it was like what is the value behind this yeah and it was like well god made all these galaxies and it was like they're just there for you to look at logically is why what yeah. is what is purpose of star dying what why and she was like well i don't get it i was like this is why more intelligent people have a lower eq because it's hard to understand the value of something. Right. And you'll see this with anyone that is majored in any one specific topic. You bring in something that has slight value with it. They're like, yeah, but a 
just your normal off the shelf blood pressure cr- blood pressure cuff doesn't really show you value in your medical stuff. It's like, oh, well, I'm dying. No, your blood pressure is just high. Like it's. But uh, that's intermission, guys. Thank you. It's worth the, I think, $80. That's yummy. Yeah. Your everyday. Not your Tasty. Table. It's not your $20 table. No. Which is now like your $30. Which I don't really keep the $20 table whiskeys anymore. I'll, I'll bring them to like a military party, but I'm going to leave it there. Yeah. Like, it's not, oh, I left Jack Daniels, or. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't care. About Give me those. an example of, like, name brand, one of these whiskeys that you're talking about. Table whiskeys? Jack yeah. Daniels, Jose, any of your five J's? Jim Bean. Oh, Jim okay. Bean. Jim Bean. Jim Bean. Jim Bean, Jack, Jose. Jim okay. <laughs> Bean. There he goes. Yeah, you're back to Louisiana. Your table wines, your table whiskeys, <laughs> your table wines are anything less than fifteen dollars. Now your table whiskeys, scotches, bourbons are all less than thirty dollars now. The that's just yeah. You can drink it every day, and it's not going to break the bank. In retrospect, now we're talking about sixty plus. Once you get up to a hundred, this is your every once in a blue moon. I want this. It's not. As low as, but it's not as high end. Now, when you start hitting the 150 plus, this is where it's your special occasion. It's an anniversary. It's a birthday. It's a holiday. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. For us, it's just, I'm buying what tastes good. Yeah, pretty much that's what it comes down to is I walked through the store and I was like, that one looks good. Yeah. Or I know this one tastes good. (laughs) Or that rum. Oh, uh, that, that rum. Which I, I meant to look up a recipe for that rum this time, and I just didn't get it. Plantation rum. Plantation. One yeah. ring to rule them all. It's so good. How good is it? It's like butter. Oh, it's the I bee's like butter. knees. As yeah, they I mean, <laughs> this is like if you're going to do like a light rum mixture, mm-hmm. it is the perfect mm-hmm. light rum mixture. I can't remember the rum I got. At my house, I got a light and a dark rum. You got a dark rum, and that dark rum is very, very good as a mixer. I mean, they're both good as mixers. I don't but... remember what the light rum was. I, don't I mean, they're the same it. brand, but they are from South America. Yeah. Because I won't buy, I think they're from, a... was it To? Oh, crap. I was just thinking about it. It's off Venezuela. It's a small island. Toenail? Nope. Okay. That's not what it is at all. That That's. But... No boggin. No, no, it was a. Quick guessing, Mike. It was a pirate cove. <laughs> I hate you, Mike. Tabasca. To... Tabasca. <laughs> That's what it was. It was called Tabasca. <laughs> no, it's a small <laughs> island off there that makes it. It's really good. Again. We need more. It's help. called Listen. Trinidad. It's oh. from Trinidad. That I was pretty close. So close. So close. You were like yeah. this close. Yeah. Couple letters switched. Yeah. Couple you consonants, had it. vowels. Solid. You got it. Pretty much the entire word. I would have had it. (laughs) Almost. Almost the whole word. Just erase it all, start over. Yeah. And then you had it. Kind of like you have five tries to do whatever word of the day is for... Five what? Wordle? Yeah, Wordle. That one. I love Wordle. Gross. (laughs) Most like Ginger. That was rude. Watch. This is going to be the next Lost Ginger episode. (laughs) Lost Ginger 2. Ginger's been lost lost twice now. We We found her. And then we we lost lost her. her again. Lost Ginger 2, the regingering. The regingering. <laughs> wow, we're setting titles now. Well, I guess I am out of a job. <laughs> the regingering. Lost episode 2. Every episode of Ginger is going to be a Lost Ginger episode. Oh, I'm down. I'm super down. Then she's going to be on here full the time. Something, something. Yes, actually, I like this idea, actually. Her, her nickname this? now is the Lost Ginger. The Lost, the lost slash Found Ginger. <laughs> Sad. That can be the thumbnail. Sad. Her sad face. My sad face. I prefer I prefer the V face. Yeah. 
The V face, I think, is going to win. <laughs> <laughs> if we could all do it at the same time. Three, yeah. two, one. <laughs> that was it. That's going to be the... Lost ginger, the V face. That could have another The lost meaning. ginger V... F- Ooh, I don't uh, know. That mm. could... Mm. Yeah, no, no. I don't think we're going to touch on that one. That no. could... Uh... Lost, lost ginger, return of the V. <laughs> <laughs> Come and take it. <laughs> Come and take it. The shirt she's wearing. <laughs> This is a good uh, shirt. I don't know if that should. Tell us about your shirt. Oh, I got this shirt. I saw it, and I had to have it. Do, um, do you stand up so that the, the audience can see the shirt? So, come and take it. Pretty much try me. Try me. It's also um, a call out to Texas. It's a call out to Texas, but also um, reproductive rights and my stance on health of uterine boners. Okay, keep um, going. What, what's your stance on uterine boners? Owners. <laughs> owners. Owners. No B. No B. No, I'm sure. Um, I, I would no, love to no, hear your No, legitimately, I'm curious as to what your stance on uh, the uterus owners are. Because uh, I'll, I'll tell you this. From not knowing the meaning of the shirt, come and take it. Even with the middle fingers, it's like, come here. I want you. It doesn't. Oh. It, mm-hmm. it doesn't. To me. Okay. Doesn't portray what. You've already stated it. Oh, which I actually got what you were saying with your shirt. With, but I think that might my opinion might be biased because I know you. Okay. You know. Hey, but if you saw the shirt on somebody else, what would you think? I mean, I can't really tell you that because I can't like infer a a a natural response. What if you just saw it. like this image? Well, I just think it would be a cow. You would think of a cow? Yeah. Okay. It actually does look it, like it, it a cow. It just kinda looks like a cow. Longhornish? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I could see that. No, but I'm um I think that people should have the choice on what to do with their with their own body. With their own body. Um I know that's a hot topic. Well, oh. I mean it, it is because we, we get into choice and it comes into like okay, at what point is a life a life? Is a life a life? Absolutely. At, at what point are you removing the choice from someone else? Absolutely. Pretty much. When does it judicially become murder? It, that's... And I can agree with that. And I can agree with all of the stances. I don't think that abortions pass viability or arguably like. And we've second I think trimester we've been, on the podcast. We talked about this, and okay. I was like, yeah. we'd love to dive into this. With, with ginger. You. Oh, okay. So well, here we go. I, 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 and I agree with those stances. Like, yeah, no, I don't think what's a a, preg- a two term pregnancy is what thirty nine weeks. Well, and I think I brought up a case specifically. I think it happened in Texas, um, where female was driving down the road. Drunk driver ends up pinning her, but she was going to the abortion clinic. But the dude that killed her was still charged with double homicide. That's interesting. And this was before the whole, you can't abort in Texas. Which, I mean, realistically, I think, and in, in, this is assuming that we could actually get everyone to sit down at a table and come to a, a, a consensus and an agreement, you know, actually talk to each other, right? Instead of yell at each other. But I think both sides need to sit down and come to a consensus on what do we consider... A viable this, life. Yeah, this this point is, and you're never going, you're never going to get. You people, won't get a hundred percent. You're never going to get a hundred percent. No, right? ever, never, ever, ever. Because I got people in my family who are like, well, the moment that it's conceived, that's it, and it's like, okay, uh, okay. then you know how many women are going to be charged with poisoning their child because they didn't know they were pregnant? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Like a, a lot <laughs> of. I insane. mean, I don't know the. The number. I don't know the, the number. Statistic. I on just this, know for but us, I know... like when Ruth was, we didn't know she was pregnant until I don't know weeks later. Her period was late. Yeah. But we were still drinking. Yeah. 
And then my wife asked me, "Is like, oh, is the kid going to be like messed up now medically? Are we going to have all these health? It was like. And realistically, no more than what you would have gotten from his jeans. Yep. Because I only wear tactical pants. Hey. Hey-o. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, to me, it's the same thing on that aspect. It's like, how can you, what is viable? Yeah. So, like, medically, viability is, I believe, 25 or 27 weeks. Okay, and, and a full term is? Full term is, I believe, 30, 40 weeks? 40, 39. Eight months, nine months? Yeah. And I can so, look up the numbers, but yeah, that's off the top of my head. I don't think that aborting a baby for a non medical reason, just if there is a medical reason, whether that's uh there's something you know wrong with the baby the or fetus whatever you want to call it or it's a threat to the mother's life and that's a hard choice and that is an extremely i can't even i I don't even ever want my kid and my wife to be in i've never met my kid but i have my wife here i mean a person who already has value is a person who is only potential value i that's that's how I look at it. Right, but you have to hard. also think of like, okay, what if but then this life if is wanted? The... What if this person? What if this couple has been trying to conceive? And what if and... my wife lives and the kid dies and now she has the rest of her? I'm not even just looking at my own. I'm looking at how she's gonna feel if I choose her or if I choose if I choose the kid. She she won't. But that's exist I mean, so that's like a totally another thing. Like, but now, now personally, my personal opinion, as you can this, see, this is very. Contentious? Con- nope. Contentious. That's what I said. <laughs> Is it? Contentious. I'm so okay. glad you get to re- rewatch these because you didn't say it <laughs> the first time. Well, the great thing about this is that I also edit it so I can make myself look as smart as I want. Mm, it's not helping. <laughs> <laughs> as Mike just gorges down on one of the shorts pizzas. <laughs> I ain't got no pizza. Uh, <laughs> but, no, but it's... This is... What I love Re- about this. Realistically, cause... I think that because it is such a contentious topic. Mm, you said um, it right again. As many times as I can. And ain't like you, brother. He's just totally going to throw the new one in. <laughs> I'll, just, just, I'll just redub myself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> every uh, time make, someone I'll make says it look contentious, really bad it's going to be on everyone else's. <laughs> Um, Ginger, can you say contentious so we can? Contentious. Yep, he's gonna add that over it. I'm gonna add that over my own voice. Contentious. <laughs> contentious. But um, realistically, I think that because this is a moral dilemma, that we need to just remove the government from it. And I Less personally believe. Overreach. I personally believe that okay, the metal can. Medical community needs to come to a decision on when viability is and everything like that. But then the government needs to stop trying to ingest themselves. Interject. Well, you just brought up the medical community. So we're talking about what we were talking about in your book series. The admiralty of the medical community is going to come up with what viability is. And if they're so far removed already... We still run into the same issue we're running into with politics and government overreach. But this is where it comes from, is the medical community will say this, but the government will remove themselves from it completely. The government does not get a say in what you do with your body anymore. And even if government's out of it completely, we're still going to have the admiralty of the medical career fields dealing with this and be like, well, this. But they're so far removed because they're so far up. It was like, well, I only do this when this, when I'm getting this much income based off of it. We're going to run into the same issue. uh, I can hear what you're saying, but I also feel like. Oh, don't get me wrong. There will be a lot of good input. That, but I mean, in the medical community, it's. It's a little different than the government. Oh, a hundred percent. It's way different. Because, well, I mean, like, if I throw enough can... money at them, they'll just do it, right? That's because the government's so in- intertwined with medical. But if it's it's, I don't know. In my brain, and I'm I might be wrong. I don't know. 
but it's scientific and you can prove it and it's a lot logical. of it's scientific and proof and the biggest thing is but, to save a life they every doctor swears an oath my mom swore an oath and it it's for a life so here, how do you decide between one life and the other when we decide on the viability of a life my problem with saying that it is scientific and that is proof is that scientific proof especially medical scientific proof is a moving target Yes. All right, because it was a viable decision that women would get a case of the vapor and need to be sent to the, the fucking ward. the the grippy sock house, the grippy sock. Yeah. <laughs> and but, and while they're there, eh, let's just give them a lobotomy while we're at it. Why don't we? Because this is thing isn't we scientifically about, proven. Everywhere you go, it's called a medical practice. It's even going down this factual yes it's scientific based off what we know yeah no and but it's practice sorry, medical practice so we still don't know for sure yes we have all these past but humans evolve i'm and sorry christians changing people evolve people change we're living different times now yeah. than we did before 100%. people will continue to evolve you're right maybe we didn't come from apes but we are evolving so if medical practice is what it's called, maybe that's what people are stuck on because we're always practicing for better. Practice how you preach. Okay, well, I'm going to practice this heart surgery on a pig and see if it lives. I'm going to practice these sutures on bananas and fruits. Okay, but could we do it better? Yes. So back to the heart of it, abortion, ovarian rights. How do we fix this whole aspect of talking about what is viable? I I do think we need to remove government from it. Because I and, and I'm very much of the opinion that every time we involve the government in anything, they fuck it up. Right? It, like, Let's like, look at taxes. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, you know, hey, guess what? The 1% tax was supposed to be taxing the rich, right? Guess what? We it, have all these tax incentives. Yeah, we've now. all we, income tax was supposed to be a one percent tax to just tax the rich. And now we are getting tax income tax. And then there inheritance was inheritance tax was supposed to be a tax to just tax. There was the a rich. voluntary tax before it became pretty much statewide, United yeah. States wide, for wartime effort. I think it was World War One. And that's when it was because a lot of people were assisting, government was broke. We're dealing with all these it was World War One time frame. So but, it's But cycling back around hmm. I, I fully believe that every time we Im involve the, the government, government they in decisions that they don't need to be involved in, because this is a moral dilemma and a moral decision, and there is no firm yep. line it, that that we can conceivably say this is the line. Right. I mean, and a lot of like my beliefs are like coming from my morals, um, but that's not to say that my morals align with everyone else's and that my choice is right for anyone. But and it so should like still be personal. But it's like essentially is I think everyone should get to make whatever choice is right for them in no matter the circumstance. Moral choice, moral dilemma, moral respect across the boards. And, yeah. and if you feel the need to come out and try and inform the populace of your opinion, or whatever facts you've assembled, awesome. Because an informed populace is a populace that can make the right moral decision. I mean, we're seeing this with all the riots for Israel, Pakistan. It was like, oh, from the Palestine. river. Palestine. Palestine. I'm not editing that out. That's fine. I don't care. But we see it, and it's like, oh, they're chanting all these things. Well, do you know what it means? No. No? Because you're not informed. Okay, so if we can... Everybody wants to inform people about Israel and Palestine. Why aren't we educating people on ovarian rights? On moral dilemmas? On... It's like, okay, so it's not okay for me to abort a baby. For your belief. But it's okay for me to get behind a car and drink and drive. And I get what? Two, three years? Or... Change change it. Let's jump to a different aspect of our judicial system. You get less time for a rape charge than you do a murder charge. Fucked up. It's like, you are ruining someone's life. Not 
deleting them from Earth. No, you're ruining their life mentally. You're giving them yep. trauma for the rest of their <clears throat> fucking life. So, how is there less time for that? Uh, yeah. Good fucking question. So, maybe our judicial system needs a fix on that. And then I we think go- there's like a, a every. There's a whole lot of things that need a lot of reworking. Well, there is, and this is the nature of a, a government that has existed for so long with without its hands and everything. Well, not just that, but without any oversight, internal national upset. I think we've had upset over the past couple of years for specific topics. No, I'm talking. And, and no one's going to want to hear this violent upset. What are you talking about? We just had an insurrection. Oh, uh, yeah, the the January 6th insurrection. You're, you're right. Um, I mean, we had an upset, and veterans, civilians. And people not even involved. Like, so. I'm not salty about this. What defines violence? Like, because well, people died can... there. You can burn down entire cities as long as you're backing the right movement. You know what actually changed something with the banking system? The government actually stepped in. Dude built a reinforced bulldozer. Listen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Killdozer is an over-exaggerated story, okay? Killdozer? Yeah, he made a dozer, ran over a bank, got trapped in it. In the 90s, because it, it, it wasn't necessarily Did he get just trapped the, in the dozer or the bank? He got trapped in the dozer. Oh, okay. He, he, he essentially up-armored his dozer and started running over, um, it was a small town, and he started running over, like, public offices and stuff like that, because they, and they, they built a factory upwind from his, um, his little mechanic shop, mm-hmm. and he tried to block it, and he tried to block it, and he didn't succeed, and yeah, it, it's just this thing, but people, people, you know, martyr, have been martyring Killdozer here, here lately. I haven't seen that, so maybe I'm missing what you're talking about. No, no, people have been, like, really martyring Killdozer and being like, oh, man, maybe I should Killdozer and shit like this, and it's... Watch, now I'm going to get all these reels and whatnot. Well, just... Exactly yeah, what you're talking about. Yeah. And it's, honestly, it's not... But this... That was a perfect example of the violence that was, in my opinion, we're not talking about extreme violence, but we're talking about violence, a massive change that affected change, in my I, opinion. When I am talking about massive change, I'm not talking about like, that. that's not the massive change I'm talking about. I'm talking about like French le- Revolution levels of change. Okay, recent French Revolution where everybody's just, everybody just stopped working. No, I'm talking about old school where they beheaded a bunch of motherfuckers. Okay, but how is that viable? Like, how is that worth it? How is that? I'm not saying that that's viable now. I'm saying something on that level. Got it. I mean, that's also why I was asking about what is a proper level of violence? Like, how are we going to, are we just going to behead all politicians? I'm not saying that that we need that, but we need something of such significance to cause change on that level. I'm not saying that we need a revolution and I'm not saying that we need to cause violence against our own government, but we need something that is so impactful that it would cause change on that level, right? Something that would upset the status quo to that degree. Okay. Because even 9-11 didn't do that. We had BLM. 9-11 9-11 did it to a specific group of people. Yeah. But recently we had BLM. Did they not change the aspect of how people saw things? Was that not a level of violence? We had January 6th. Did a very similar aspect. We also have people tearing down statues in the South, North. We have all these different things happening in the past couple of years that do they not all equate to a level of violence? No. Not the level of violence I'm talking about. Because they didn't they didn't equate to the amount of change I'm talking about. Because as much as you look at these things and go, they caused change, they didn't cause change on such a level that it was a national surge. So what you're talking about is we need violence that actually causes change. 
not yeah. just violence. So what if we're having that level of violence, but change isn't happening? When I'm talking about that level of violence, I'm talking about the level of violence that happened during the American Revolution, that happened during World War One, that happened during World War Two, that happened during the Spanish-American War. I'm talking about the level of violence where people are coming back from it and they're going, I never want to be a part of this again. So we're talking about World War II. Never we're talking about World War Three. That's what we're talking well, about. Well, in the future, but people came back from World War I. French warfare was horrendous, and we, we lasted 20, 30 years before the next war. Mm-hmm. America did. Was, and if we had had our way, we wouldn't have gone back in. Correct. And then World War II, people are coming back, and it was, it was hell. Like, there's battlefields with the word hell in it. So, it's... It changed the entire populace. It did. Because everyone from the ground up experienced it. So, maybe I'm misunderstanding your violence, because we've had violence over the past couple of years. We've had shops burned down. We've had violence in the street. Members of both sides... Black, you, white, and different, dying. Do you feel like that affected every city in the nation at the same time? I understand what you're saying. You, you're saying violence that everyone everywhere all at the same time is feeling it, and because everyone everywhere at the same time is feeling it, massive change happens instantaneously. Almost instantaneous yes. in comparison to our country. So we're yeah. going to an instant gratification fix of an it, issue. It's not instant gratification. It's, yeah, I would say, yeah. The, I mean, World War Two and the changes that became from it took at least a decade. Arguably That's not more, instant yeah. gratification. Yeah. That's not instant gratification. Change for, yep, no, I, can, I understand That's more what you're saying. That's generational change. That's hard, yeah. And I personally, and I don't know about y'all, but I personally don't want to be there for that. Well, I don't know. Who but the fuck wants to be there for? We are going to be there. Oh, I... Because think of your grandparents and the kind of change they saw. Interesting. It's definitely a lot to think about, a lot to ponder, a lot to think, a lot to look into. Be the change. Uh, we'll catch you on the next segment. Maybe it wasn't, maybe it was a disease, maybe it was food. Maybelline. Maybe it's Maybelline. Smack those smiles back, goldfish. <laughs> I didn't know that that's what they actually said in that. Smack those smiles back. Oh, surprise. Surprise. The I learned something. Know. The more you know. G.I. Joe. <laughs> I knew he was going there. G.I. Joe. American heroes. But no, we have this dark history that nobody wants to talk about because yeah. it is hard. Yeah. But how can we learn from our history if we don't want to talk about it, if we're erasing it from existence? And I know you're going to say something when we weren't recording, and Mike's like, good time. I don't even remember what I was going to say. America has uh, a dark history. Uh, America has a, a dark history. The, the, the world has, you know, I mean, history well, in itself is dark, but well, we're talking about American history. Um, but... And and I, I, I think that you made the proper statement there is like the world has a dark history. Every country, every country mm-hmm. has a dark history of genocide and cleansing and everything else. But except for North Korea. He was a god, he came down, he's great. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. <laughs> but I mean um, it, there's a- a lot of really hard discussions and and currently i feel like we're not wanting to have those discussions and so things are being burned or taken away or not taught because why do you think we don't want to have those discussions about history why don't we no why do you think we don't want to I think there's people who don't want to admit that they were wrong. 
I think that there are people who think that they're protecting the younger generation in some misguided way. Um, so I'm sure there's lots of reasons, but let, I mean, let's use an example here. Removing the statues of forward. Confederate general yeah. and renaming anything with a Confederate lean or even I don't even think it was just Confederate now. I think renaming it was just across the board. Renaming mountains um and landmarks to to anyone that was a slave owner. No. To reflect uh Native American uh landmarks and and uh everything even though they have a history of a certain name. Even the syrup company. Same thing. Yeah, even the syrup company, which I was bitching about this day, old Aunt Jemima. Could, I know it started. Which we've brought on this I, podcast before. I know it started with. We've had Aunt Jemima on the podcast. And we've had Aunt Jemima on the podcast. Wow. I'm impressed. We're I know good. it started with Southern Generals of the Confederacy, but then it switched over to everyone who was a slave owner, which George Washington was a slave owner also. A lot of these founding fathers of America were slave owners. It was very common at the time. It was a different time. It, it was, was a different time. It was. But. But we also have Aunt Jemima, black founded company, and did very, very well. But now we're changing the name. And now we're removing even Native Americans from existence in a way on what we're calling hills, peaks, valleys. No, we're not removing Native Americans. Not true. Native Are, Americans no? have been removed in many, We're many ways. We're removing names of what they called things. Really? Yep. Because I heard the opposite. I heard that we were renaming landmarks that the white man had named things and renaming it to various, not even the original Nat Native American names, but to just whatever Native American name to appease. Maybe it's dependent on area. Topo? It, it could be dependent on area, because I was talking with a couple of my Incan Nation buddies, which if you don't know what their movement is, they're, they're all about bringing back not just Native Americans, America, but across the Americas. Yeah. What was properly owned. Give us back our value. Give us who we were. Give us back our land. So there's a lot there that they're, they're fighting for, their movement is pushing towards. But they're not just, yes, America is changing it back to a bastardized version of what it was. But we're not actually changing it back to what it was. We're changing it back to what we think it was. Mm. So instead of it being called like wind and soul, we're calling it water dirt. Like it's a horrible example, but essentially no. that's don't no, no, that that's, I mean that's a perfect example in my opinion. I don't know the actual Native American words for it, but essentially that's the translation. I know that there was one mountain somewhere in the americas that was called china man china man mountain right and the reason it was called china man mountain is because a you know some a railroad road worker had climbed had been the first one to climb to the peak of the mountain interesting and they called it china man and he was from china and so they called him he was from china he was working and, on the western you know, railroad a, you yeah know, no, okay yeah. And i don't I personally don't see a problem with calling it China Man Mountain. It's like, cool. We just stapled what he did for all of history. Instead, they're renaming it to his name. Here's the thing. <laughs> I literally just read this. Oh my God. Like, yesterday. I have no idea what the name of this mountain is now. China Man, or, and I'm totally going to destroy, possibly, is like, Hot Sounds. Yeah, I, 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 bing ding. <laughs> <laughs> no, here you go. So we are my, Siamese, if you please. So my the sister, dun, 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 dun. We my are sister is married to. If you don't please, dun, 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 immigrants dun, dun. from China. She's married to one of their sons. Their last name is Sue. Guess how you spell it? S U E. S U. X U. X U. X U. That's it. That's her last name. How am I, who grew up understanding? English. English alphabet supposed to know X U is Sue. I thought that would be like zoo. Zoo. Like, okay, 
it's Zoo, spelled X U. No, it's Sue. Because their so X makes a different sound. Yeah. We say it could be racist. It could be just not understanding. But pot sounds, clean clangs. It's no different than any African language that they have with the clicks, and I can't pronounce any of their names. And I got one of them that works in my office. Which realistically, their clicking languages are fucking impressive. They're really um, impressive. Can you even make those clicking sounds? Just, but can you do no. that while talking? No. No. Exactly. No. Like yeah. it's in, it's insane. Mm-hmm. The mouth control. Mouth and throat. Yeah. It's. Mm-hmm. Props. Yeah. That's what I was trying <laughs> no, to say. It, it's props. pretty fucking cool. Yeah. I'm so, not I mean, gonna lie. We we change or we're changing it from Chinaman to I don't know, Xing Zing or Zing Glo or Yeah, I mean Su I, or it's like Whatever, but here's the problem. Who's gonna know it more? Dude's name or Chinaman. Now it's just gonna be bastardized version of his last name or in first name. Yeah. But like no one's going to remember this place. This is the mountain I can't pronounce. I'm not going to yeah, remember yeah. it. Can't pronounce mountain. It's, C- congratulations. It's some Chinese name. Listen, I understand. I do. I get it. Fucked up shit happened in history. Right? Like, we did all sorts of fucked up shit in history. Stop rewriting history. But Please. Even the Native Americans memorialized him for eternity. And I'm sure he's still potentially talked about in their cultures. This is Chinaman Mountain because he walked up it. He climbed it because I've been to some of their bonfires, their campfires, and they talk about stories back from forever ago. That's how they it, pay memorial. They, they pay respects, memorial, and how they pass on tradition. Mm-hmm. So you have the storyteller that comes out and explains this whole thing. Well, but when that storyteller comes out and he's explaining this thing, you got to understand. That's racist, so you can't tell that. You it's need to racist because he brings this. out two pans and claims. You need to claims. change the story, okay? It can't be Chinaman anymore because that's racist. Where's he from? China. I... And in some respects, in my opinion, he was... Res- he was. It, you called it Chinaman Mountain, and in that regard, you were representing all of China. He owned you, the mountain at you, that point. You owned that mountain. But you know we've got to we've got to relabel. I can see your point in renaming the mountain into a name that's less Memorable, pronounceable, distinguishable, and taking the story away because, like, you call it Chinaman Mountain, and you're like, "Why is it called Chinaman Mountain? Oh, well, it's called this because that." But if you just heard, "Oh, that's Zanshu Mountain," you'd be like. Oh, okay. You wouldn't ask necessarily the same questions. But I guess there are some things that I can... Like, I think that all history should be taught. But I can also agree with taking down... Not taking down history, but taking down They shouldn't be monuments. They should be memorials understandings remembrance well well and, and this is the thing it's like i don't actually have a real problem with taking down the confederate general's statue right i don't have a problem I, with it i do have a problem with taking down the confederate general's statues and then dumping them in the river you know i don't even care about that i care about removing them from history books that yeah. that shouldn't happen like cool you don't think the statue should be there anymore cool Tear it down, recycle it, do whatever. Put it in the archives. It existed. It lives here. Problem solved. Yeah. Whatever you do with it, fine. I guess the government's going to find a way to take it out of the river. You're just polluting your own river, which is doing more shit for yourself. Yeah. No, I like, don't agree with I don't think you destroying should Destroying or dumping or vandalizing. Correct. I do but my I, issue is the history book removal. I and I agree with that. I don't think that history should be erased. Cuz if no. we don't we learn have from to it, learn from it. We're we have to, to read the fucked up learn. shit. Yep. Yeah. We have to have the hard discussions. We have to say like, yeah, our country fucking did this horrible thing. Yeah, we brought slaves in and people own slaves well, and 
we learn from that and we don't do that anymore. It, and it, this is why we don't do that yep. anymore. And the other side to that, that is that let's recognize that this was a different time. And so oh, don't absolutely. demonize people for abiding by the, the, the norms of that time, right? If the founding fathers owned slaves, don't demonize the founding fathers because they owned slaves. Which was common practice. I mean, shoot, uh, Saudi Arabia up until I think it was like 2017, 2018, never had an accident. And then women started driving. Like, that's a joke. Like, Saudi Arabia jokes about, oh, we never had an accident until we gave women driver's license. 2017, 2018. Now women are driving Saudi Arabia. Huge win for them. Like, America's women's movement was, what was it, 30s, 40s, I think? 20s. I don't, I don't have I'm not gonna pack a hard that, number yeah. on that. I don't know the hard number. But well, huge I mean, reformation there. Here, here's here's the, the question. What do you call women getting the vote? Is this like a joke? I was going to say the exact same thing. I was going to ask you it's it's a joke. joke. I don't know. Equal rights? No. No. What did they call it then? Women's suffrage? Women's suffrage. If you walk up to someone now and you say, do you support women's suffrage? They're going to say, no, absolutely. Oh, no, I don't, I don't absolutely. support women's suffering. This is an example. This is the perfect example, in but my opinion, really of history. people forgetting history. Right? Because you yeah. don't know what women's suffrage means. Right? But if you know what women's suffrage means, your first response is, fuck yes. Yeah, I support women's suffrage. Obviously. Duh. I want women to vote. Yeah, I mean, same with three-fifths compromise at the time. and mm -hmm. No, that's true. And if, if we don't learn from it, it's... Yeah. So, women's suffrage. So, you were talking about off-podcast. The biggest beautiful movement is dying or oh, is dead. man. Oh, man. Because we're it, talking it, about women's suffrage, women having the right to yeah. vote. I, we, we jumped into that, so I want to jump into the Biggest Beautiful movement. I came mm. across this because okay. a, a podcaster I follow was Because the porny watches his big about, women. And she was bringing it up, and it's like, I had issues with the bigger, you know, Biggest Beautiful mo movement. The, Let me the, be unhealthy. Well, well, I mean... Because, There's an argument that that, and I don't agree with this, that... It's glorifying obesity. Yes, because it was. Because you had influencers who were 400, 300 plus saying, I am beautiful. And it's like, you're dying. All right, so I do think you can have the self-image of being beautiful, especially in the modern time where Oh, you need to look this way to look beautiful. That's fine. You can be beautiful at whatever weight you are, but you also need to be healthy. So and you may be beautiful however you you look, but you're not healthy. Like, big is beautiful. Cool. I understand the start of the movement, but big may be beautiful, but big isn't healthy. Yeah. Big isn't longevity. You don't have forever life here. You have a finite life here because you're you're not taking care of yourself. Well, in, in you know, obviously, I'm I'm one person and I'm have a biased opinion, but I don't think a six hundred plus pound woman is beautiful. I'm I not saying you have to think she's beautiful. You know, if she has to her own self image that she is beautiful, but, that is that is what the movement started as. Right. It's However, not what it turned into. The problem with that is that supporting someone thinking that they are over that that they are excessively overweight is is beautiful and that is a positive thing is a bad thing. I would agree. One hundred percent. Am I wrong? Self because image has its value. So it, it, supporting your self image that well, I am a giant obese person. And 
that's beautiful and so that's good and so that I should keep with it is a good thing is not a good thing. Because peer pressure and societal pressure is good in that it's it pushes you to a healthy dynamic sometimes. 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 Because I lived through the time of anorexia is beautiful and God, that was not. Correct, but being Jabba the Hutt and everybody else supporting Jabba the Hutt does not necessarily mean you're healthy. Yes. But giving you the thought of... I don't... And and no, I don't... Like, obviously, someone who is... Unhealthily medically obese. Medically obese, yeah, obviously they're not healthy, but that doesn't mean they're not beautiful. Yes. And... We're talking and, about different adjectives at this point. Yeah. I, An adjective I, to define a person. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. And I think, like, there are people out there who are 300 pounds plus, 400 pounds, who are influencing doing the I'm big and I'm beautiful. And I think there's a lot that we don't know. There's, there's a lot of positive self image that they have on themselves, too, though. Well, but I mean, like, yeah, but, but do they but, have an underlying health condition that causes them to put on excess weight? But I think where Mike's going on this is we shouldn't force this on everyone. Oh, I mean, that's the well, same. The same could go for and maybe the wrong. anorexia Correct thing. Like, wrong. well, here, here's the thing. You know, there is something to be said by. Okay, <clears throat> let me. Oh, he's getting comfy. Let me let me get into this. Let me let me straighten myself out a bit. There is something to be said for bullying having positive outcomes on people's social interaction potential, right? Because it has the potential to force people. Bullying has the potential to a certain degree has the potential to force people to conform to societal norms that will make them accepted into society. But I think we've skipped past that because now we have school shooters. We're not talking about that right now. Um, I'm waiting to hear where you go with it. The same could be said by not normalizing fat people into being big is beautiful. I'm a fat person. This is fine is not a healthy dynamic when society pushes it because when you're 300 pounds and you have high blood pressure and this stuff like that because I'm sorry I don't care you know what your build is if you're 300 pounds that's not a fucking healthy weight doesn't this no, come back to personal yeah, choice that's self image versus medical Health right. versus self image. Right. Which are but talking about. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about a problem with personal choice. I'm talking I'm talking about a societal push. This is a cultural problem. I'm not talking about a judicial s- statement as they do in some countries where they say, Well, if you're obese, we're going to tax you. Right? Because I don't want that in this country. But I don't see a problem in society as a whole saying say saying saying um and putting pressure on people who are obese i understand wanting people to be healthy but why can't we just accept people as they are if if this person wants knows fully that yeah i only drink mountain dew and I am 600 pounds, and this is my life, and I know I'm going to die when I'm 40 or 50, and I'm content with that because I'm happy, that's their fucking choice. Okay, I could take this in a direction that will make sense. Okay. Mike Culberson, me, Okay. decides I'm going to blow my brains out. And I tell you, and I tell him, and I tell my parents, well, guys, this is my choice. Why are y'all trying to stop me? Because you would try to stop me, wouldn't you? I would. But 
but this is my choice. And I'm being completely open and I'm being completely honest about this, but but this is my choice, so you shouldn't involve yourself in this. And this is where my view on this whole big is beautiful is there's a difference between self-image and health. Your self-image may be, I'm a shitty per. I am Mike Culberson. I want to blow my rain- brains out. I'm horrible. And it's like, your self-image is this. That's your self-image. Now, we talk about your health. This is yeah. not healthy for you. Same with big as, in my own opinion, this is not healthy. Having a healthy self-image, okay, I like my self-image. I want it better, but this is the best I've ever been. I went from 600 to 400 pounds or five, whatever. You're, you're working on it, but you're beautiful. You love where you're at right now, but there's always room for improvement with everything. That's the way I see things. There's always room for improvement. So self-image is here. Yeah, I do think starting of big is beautiful. Yes, we need to fix the self image because they've been bullied and they got to the point potentially well, it, where they're at. So we have this fix of okay, yes, you can be beautiful at this weight. Yes, but let's move you towards a healthy standpoint. And I have met women who carried more weight than you or a lot of other women. And, but they looked healthy at that weight, right? They carried it very well, and, and they didn't have health issues to go with that. That's right? where I want the self image and right? the health and to meet. That's somewhere. different from being obese to be obese. Maybe you go from six hundred and two fifty or three hundred. Your new good, your new normal, and you look amazing, and you wear it well. But being at this this weight that isn't healthy. For yourself, this is where self-image of big is beautiful, where it started, and health should meet. Like just for the well-being of the person, not for, oh, your big is beautiful is six hundred pounds, and okay, you may have this self-image, a healthy self-image of yourself, but let's work on making it better. Are you saying I'm ugly? Nope, not at all. What I'm saying, let's make it better. Everything could always use for improvement. Yeah. I hear that. And I agree with that standpoint. I mean, but I guess, yeah. Like, from my side, we're all talking about the same thing, just in different circles. Yeah. It's like, (laughs) we talked about it. It was like, okay, we're on the same page. And then Mike was like, what if I put a gun to my head? It was like, okay, well, this is your self-image. Right. Again, let's get your self-image to a healthy point. Do we need to put you in a... Uh, sticky sock <laughs> the sticky sock jail <laughs> sticky or sock can jail. we just talk this yeah. out and yeah, if you put we... me in sticky sock jail I'm gonna fuck kill myself for sure <laughs> <laughs> with the sticky like, socks may- maybe we gotta maybe we gotta fix this it's not just the self image it's moving forward from the self image okay is that podcast that's gonna be it for tonight i think we've actually touched on a lot of issues that might be segmented (laughs) out but this is name pending this has been name pending i'm mike culberson i'm keeper hey listen i want y'all to support your veterans that's ginger by the way i want you all to support your veterans i want you to support your first responders i want you to support your police when applicable and support your military members around you yeah thanks ginger for coming out Check out our KM channel. But as Mike says, I need you to fuck that like button. Throw a comment down below. I'll respond and, to the best I can. And, and tickle, tickle that, that subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> but hey, girl, hey, that's name pending for the night. Yeah.